What's up? Hey guys, it's Yvonne. In this video, I want to show you how to create Google responsive search ads, which is a search ad format that mixes and matches headlines and descriptions that you input to give you the winning combinations as deemed by Google. Similar to dynamic search ads we created in Facebook ads a while ago. So let's jump straight into it. We will be using our Google account here and this landing page that I created in Unbounce. Make sure to check out my Unbounce playlist up above to learn how to use Unbounce and how to create simple sample landing pages. So the first thing you're going to do is select the campaign and the ad group in which you want to add the responsive search ad. You will click on plus and select responsive search ad. You can have up to 15 headlines, so you can keep adding headlines, and you can have up to four descriptions. So I'm just going to settle that up. So this is where you input your testing headlines, what you want to test, okay? So what I'm going to do now is fill all these in, okay, with sample headlines that I want to test with or against each other. And then I will uh, come back and unpause the video and show you what this pinning is, okay? So I'll see you in one second. And we're back. So I have created here 15 headlines and four descriptions that I would like Google to mix and match and tell me what combination or combinations work best. Now, there are three headlines and two descriptions in any Google ad. However, the third headline and the second description might not show up depending on the space that that ad has, okay? So the point of that is headlines that you think are very important and that you think should definitely show up, you, would, you, you should probably pin to number one or number two position for headlines and number one position for description. So the way you pin is by clicking this little pin and selecting the, the position, okay? So for example, let's suppose I definitely want this keto diet 30 day plan to show up in position one. I'm just going to pin that to one, okay? And now all these headlines could appear on any position, but keto diet 30 day plan will definitely appear in position one, okay? So the reason for pinning is, let's suppose you have, you know, get your special discount now headline, you have special ed edition discount now and 1300 satisfies users. Let's suppose all three of these are headlines. Do you think the user is going to click your ad by n having absolutely no idea what this is about, right? So an ad that when they type in keto diet and they stumble upon these three headlines will not give them anything. That is why it might be useful for you to pin. So what you could do is maybe pin the, the, the um, headlines that have your um, keyword in the first headline. In the second position, you can pin, um, you know, either in the second and third position, actually, you can even not pin anything because at that point, you know, it's just a bonus. So whether it says number two recommendation by doctors or start your keto diet now, maybe it's worth testing and experimenting, right? But you wanna make sure that you do have a headline that makes it clear to the user what it is about. So what I will do, for instance, is take these and pin these. Because I want to make sure that the keto diet does show up in my ad, that people know what it is about, okay? So now, all these uh, headlines, the ones that are pinned to one, will all be tested against each other, okay? And then the rest of these, so this one could be in position two, this one could be in position two as well, and stuff like that, Google will mix and match, okay? But obviously, you know, Google is doesn't recommend pinning, right? Because the point of responsive search ads is to allow Google to mix and match. So when you're pinning, you're limiting the experimentation that Google can do. But as I said, sometimes you want to make sure that people don't see these three headlines in a row, right? Um, also something to keep in mind, if you have as many headlines and descriptions as I do here, it's best if you also bring a lot of traffic, right? Because the less traffic you have, the less chance that each ad format will actually see the light of day. So if you think you will not be getting a lot of traffic, I would probably not recommend doing so many 
headlines, I would maybe stick to five or 10, just so that you could actually give them a chance to see what's going on and to see if they will convert. But that is in regards to this. Um, for descriptions, I made them a bit more neutral. So any one of these could show up in description one or two, and that's okay if you know one of them doesn't show up uh, because none of these are important for the user to be able to identify what the ad is about because they will be able to by looking at the headline. But now that we went through that, let's click on save ad, and I will show you how to edit the ad and how to kind of access the data you need for this ad after you create it. So you can edit the ad by clicking anywhere on the ad, or which is basically the pencil icon. Now, if you want to see the ad results, you have to click on view assets details. Make sure you click on one of these three words. If you don't, it's the same as clicking on the pencil, which will make you edit it. So if I click here, oh no, that worked, but you get the idea. So if I click anywhere above, like over here, it's going to edit, okay? So let me go back. So click on view asset details. So this will tell you how many impressions you're getting. You should see a, yeah, so it's under review now, um, but I, I will tell you what uh, you can expect to see after you do get 5,000 impressions uh, in the last 30 days. So you should see a column that says what the ranking is of the headline, something like best, good, bad, poor, right? You should see it for all of these um, assets, which are basically headlines or descriptions. Now, the cooler part I like is combinations. So once you actually create um, the ad and you generate some impressions, doesn't even have to be 5,000, you know, it could be 2,000, 3,000 impressions, doesn't have to be 5,000, you will see, <coughs> sorry, the ad variations here. So it will be three columns, and in each column you will have a bunch of different ads um, with the headlines and descriptions that you created. So you will have one ad um, over here, one ad here, one ad here. Now it will only show you impressions, it will not show you anything else, okay? So we'll show one ad here, one ad here, one ad here, and then it's gonna keep going for all the different ads that Google shows. It will not show clicks or sales. You may be wondering, well, why would impressions matter? Just seeing impressions doesn't do anything for me. I have, you know, an ad can have thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of impressions, but zero clicks. That is true, but in Google's eyes, what they're doing is they're showing your most successful ads most of all. So if you see an ad combination, right, that has the most impressions, um, or the most, let's say, percentage of impressions, it will show you impressions and the percentage, that means that the ad is generally the best performing ad because it has all those um, impressions. That means Google is showing it because it is good, okay? So that's pretty much all there is to know, all there is you need to know about responsive search ads. If you have any questions, let me know down below. But I think I covered everything, just like a regular search ad or, um, yeah, regular search ad, but now it just mixes and matches like the Facebook dynamic search ads. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, <laughs> you will probably like my video on Facebook ads and Microsoft ads. I will put the links up above. Other than that, thank you again for watching. I will see you in the next video.